In a previous video, I showed both the spatial and temporal variation in pressure and temperature in a shock tube. I've shown the pressures here, and as a reminder, we start with a low pressure driven section and a high pressure driver section, a diaphragm separating the two bursts because of the pressure differential, and an incident shock wave begins moving from left to right down the tube. As that shock wave shocks these low pressure gases, the pressure is raised up to a P2 of the shocked gas. On the other side, the expanding gas decreases to a P3, and we end up with the initial low pressure, the shocked gas pressure, the expanding gas pressure, and the original high pressure uh, driver gas. As that shock wave hits the end wall and reflects off, it leaves a high pressure P5 here in the test section, and we define that as our test condition. Another way of showing that spatial and temporal variation in a more compact format is the XT diagram, which I'd like to describe to you here. Now, notice that this uh, XT diagram has the same color scheme as that we had in the previous few slides and in the previous video where high pressure is shown in red low pressure is shown in blue now you could use an XT diagram to show any hydrodynamic property that you want pressure temperature density whatever you like here we're gonna stick to pressure because uh, it's easy to see and it matches my color scheme already uh, so you can see that this is a three-dimensional plot where the colors represent the pressure. It's called an XT diagram because the horizontal axis is the axial distance along the tube X. The vertical axis is the progression of time T. And so what that means is that we start off here at um, with at, at time zero and you can see some familiar pieces. So you've got the driver section separating uh, using the diaphragm from the driven section and then way down here at the right of the driven section is the test location as close to the end wall as we can get it. At time zero the diaphragm bursts and we get an expansion wave moving progressing through time to the left towards the left side end wall. As that's moving towards the left side end wall we have our shock wave progressing through time which means up on the vertical axis and towards the right side end wall until it reflects off the end wall and then we see the reflected shock. So somewhere in there you can see our familiar uh, four pressures. The initial low pressure P1 of the driven section, the shocked gas pressure P2, the expanding gas pressure P3, and the initial high pressure driver gas. Uh, P4. We've got a few additional pieces of nomenclature here. Notice that we have a contact surface called out and the definition of the contact surface is just the moving boundary between the shock processed fluid here at P2 and the expanding fluid here at P3 and this expansion wave. And then the test time is essentially defined as the time at which the test location remains at state 5. To get a little bit better uh, idea of this, uh, if we show this time 0 here, that looks an awful lot like the initial conditions that I showed previously uh, in my shock tube diagram. And then if we move that up, that looks kind of like the the intermediate step that I showed previously and then if we move that way up that looks a lot like um, the state of the shock tube after uh, the reflected shock passes. I would point out that this test time here that they've achieved is kind of weird. The fact that uh, you you maintain uh, this P5 for a really long time is not normal. I think what they did there is they either used a tailored driver gas or a um, 
driver section insert, both of which are topics for future conversation. Uh, but this is not normally what the test time looks like. Usually that contact surface continues moving in here, and you've only got a very brief test time. And we'll actually see that here on an XT diagram uh, in just a minute. So you can actually build your own XT diagram. Uh, the easiest way to do it is uh, to go to the Wisconsin Shock Tube Laboratory or WISL website. And I'm actually going to do that now. And this is what it looks like. Um, I've just followed, uh, I'll paste this uh, link in the comments section. To build our own XT diagram, we would go down to this link here. And then uh, you can see that they do have a MATLAB script, but they also have a Windows 32 uh, binary script. So if you've got Windows 32, I don't, I'm not sure if they've updated it for Windows 64, but you could run this uh, to build your own XT diagram. And it's going to look a little bit something like this diagram here. You can see that these, they still use the rainbow color scheme. These, these colors are a little bit different from that XT diagram that you saw previously, but we still have a red driver section and a blue driven section initially. That shock wave uh, comes on down, reflects off, and then this shows the more common temperature uh, or pressure gradient uh, that we see normally. So you see that we don't have just a constant uh, pressure here. The pressure is at the same condition for a small amount of time and then it starts to go down. And as soon as that pressure starts decreasing from its um, original P5 value, now your test is over. So that's all I have. These are my references. I hope this was helpful.